As with the St. Clair prison, committee members want to look into the possibility of putting two inmates in each cell. A special subcommittee will study that possibility for the West Jefferson County prison. It will also study the plan to erect pre-engineered metal buildings to be used as temporary dormitories for the inmates until their permanent cells are built. Later, the metal buildings would be used for prison industry. But some committee members, like Senator Big Ed Robertson, think the metal buildings will cost too much. He suggests mobile units like those being used as temporary quarters at five state prisons. Robertson claims the modular units would be cheaper than the metal buildings and that they could house prisoners before May 28th, which is the projected date for occupancy in the metal units. The time pressure is weighing heavily on the committee, which is trying to use the $45 million wisely and find space for all the state's inmates. Prison Commissioner Robert Britton says there's no existing space to be had. He says the governor even tried to buy a correctional facility at Talladega from the federal government, but he was turned down. Lisa Nielsen, WSFA TV News. Ms. Beasley is faced with what some consider to be a difficult question. Should she go ahead and transfer the workers even though the department says it can afford them? The transfer started out when the department, under then Commissioner Gary Cooper, ran into money shortages. Originally, as many as 100 workers were faced with transfers to local pensions and security offices. Later, that number was reduced to 21, but a group of those 21 filed a suit in circuit court saying the transfers were unfair. Circuit Judge Sam Taylor instead allowed the workers to air their grievances before an administrative hearing panel, an arm of the PNS department. Fifteen of the 21 workers have taken part in the administrative hearings, which are designed to let them explain why they shouldn't be transferred. Those hearings are over, and the hearing administrator has turned over a list of recommendations to Ms. Beasley, who isn't bound by the recommendations, but will likely consider the legal advice. One source says the issue is particularly sticky for three reasons. The mandatory transfers of this sort have reportedly never been used in state government. The transfers carry legal questions about the worker's right to protect their merit system status. And the transfers involve basically autonomous local boards of pensions and security, which would individually have to vote to approve accepting the transferred workers. If Ms. Beasley opts to transfer the workers anyway, their suit in circuit court could be revived. If, of course, the matter doesn't make its way to the state personnel board first. At least five of the 15 who are contesting the transfers have already filed notices of appeal with the personnel board. Although Ms. Beasley says she may have a decision ready by the end of the week, the avenues of appeal could drag the transfer issue on for quite some time. Chris Grimshaw, WSFA TV News. I think there'll be a lot of fish caught in October. I really do. Uh, for us to catch as many fish as we did in the last, we really fished, say, two, probably two days. We've been here three days, but we caught a lot of nice fish, and uh, I expect there'll be a, probably twice as many caught when we come back in October. There won't be any trouble for 40 of the world's best bass fishermen to find a place to go on this. No, river. sir. In fact, we about, we about got lost ourselves yesterday. We took a map with us, and Greg, my friend here, he came with me. Uh, he kept me posted on where I was at and uh, what marinas we was close to, or the, or the creek channel. And uh, I think we've done real good. I'm pleased with coming down and catching as many fish as I did. Okay, if the, if the tournament was tomorrow, what would you, where would you fish and how would you fish? I'd probably go down on account of the bigger fish down and they are up. Of all the fish we caught, the bigger fish was down the lake or the river. Uh, possibility of bigger fish are going to be caught early in the morning. That's when we caught all our good fish. And it seemed like it got tougher up in the day, up in the midday, it was so hot. Then, in the afternoon, the fish started feeding again.
The Municipal Electric Authority proposes to pay Alabama Power Company $412 million for ownership interests in the company's Farley Unit No. 2 and Miller Steam Plant Units 2, 3, and 4. The authority wants to gain direct access to the generating facilities as soon as possible so that it can offer service to its customers at a lower cost. The authority is made up of 12 Alabama cities, including Opelika, Dothan, Alexander City, Troy, Luverne, and Tuskegee. Uh, this would mean a savings over a 10-year period for the cities involved of $102 million. And it would mean a, a savings to the power company customers of $90 million. The $412 million purchase proposal estimates that the authority would relieve Alabama Power from having to raise approximately $344 million in capital or long-term debt for the construction of generation and transmission facilities through 1991 and $68 million for construction of transmission facilities through 1990. Cassandra Taylor, WSFA TV News. With no budget, principals can't make intelligent plans for the school year. That's according to James Street, the executive director of the Alabama Council for School Administration and Supervision. He says since principals won't be able to plan class schedules or hire teachers without knowing how much money they'll have to work with, they can't begin classes. Street says he hopes lawmakers will pass a budget quickly during the upcoming special session, but since the governor may call for some reform packages as well as the education budget, Street says it could take all month for a budget to be approved. One of the hang-ups on the education budget during the regular session was a statewide health insurance plan for teachers. The Alabama Education Association pushed for a $21 million package to be administered through the retirement systems. Now Street says he and members of his council favor a budget proposal developed by State School Superintendent Wayne Teague. One of the main differences in the two is the insurance package. Teague proposes only $16 million to be administered through local school boards. Another change, level funding for higher education with major emphasis on elementary and secondary education. Street says there will be no need for colleges and universities if K-12 through isn't built up. Gina Gregory, WSFA TV News. Three separate court cases dating back as far as a decade were explained to the committee because they're the basis for the Department of Education letter. The intent of the explanation, according to committee chairman Joe Sutton, was to bring what he called a common level of understanding as to how the problem arose in the first place. The committee was also given a long list of criteria which has been outlined as necessary for an acceptable plan. This includes statistical information on the number of blacks and whites graduating from high school to the number of blacks enrolled in the colleges and universities versus the proportional number of blacks in the faculty and administrative positions. Tomorrow, the committee will listen to a representative of the Florida college system which has had their plan approved already. The committee will then break down into subcommittees and actually begin drafting the plan piece by piece. Sutton said following the Florida representative's presentation, the committee would go into executive session and continue its work in private. Chris Grimshaw, WSFA TV News. This is the height of the training season when guard divisions come from all across Alabama to Camp Shelby to simulate some of the situations troops might face on active duty. Each division has its own tasks, such as this one from Selma, which performs support services. These soldiers see that combat troops have water, food, ammunition, even a laundry, which cleans some 800 pieces a day, and a bakery, which daily bakes about 200 loaves of bread. Alabama has more National Guardsmen than any other state, a fact the governor is pleased to point out. It is outstanding, and as I said earlier, I think the uh, Alabama National Guard is recognized as the best in the United States, and we're all proud of that. But the governor isn't the only familiar face at Camp Shelby this week. Montgomery Mayor Emery Falmer even outranks Troop Commander General Henry Cobb. President Reagan has appointed Falmer a civilian aide to the Secretary of State. 
After the guardsmen finish here, they return to their homes where they are lawyers, accountants, mayors, and even governors. Lisa Nielsen, WSFA TV News, Camp Shelby, Mississippi. Uh, Charlie, are you ready to make the uh, trophy presentation? Bill, I sure am. I, I'm ready to uh, give it to someone. Okay. Uh, what, well, this I'm the best there is. Why don't you give me the trophy? Can you read those bones? I can read them, but it's hard for me to add that fast. And I'm playing uh, Coach Bear Bryant. I've heard of it. And I'm going to take me an ad machine and add up on that because I know he's smart. You haven't put his name on the trophy yet. We haven't put it on there yet, but we're going to see tomorrow who can who can come out the winner. Now, this son, uh, brother Snow, this yeah. is the world champion domino tournament, and it takes place in Alabama. And I'm thrilled about this, us southern folks. And there'll be folks here all over the world trying to be the number one domino player in the world, and I'm glad to be part of it. I want to know, when you were selling fertilizer, did you ever slip in on some of those partner games that they have around and all Ooh, those places? I did, and I'd watch them, and I'd see some geniuses at work, I and sometimes, uh, uh, son, it'd go on forever, too, in the back of them country stores. On one of my albums, I talk about how the bus drivers sat on the nail kegs and RC Cola cases playing dominoes, waiting for school uh, to let out where the buses could load. I know why you're here. You're going to get more material down there at that domino tournament than you have in six months. I sure hope so. I really do. You a good one, son. I reckon you know Mississippi State's done hard okay. Coach Barfield. I reckon I yeah. know Yeah, did you see the Street and Smith magazine? Where'd they put them? Oh, then put them Mississippi State Bulldogs number one. <laughs> oh, I can't stand it. Oh, ain't that something? I'd rather be picked last and come in number one. But this is a domino tournament, and I told them Brother Snow would tell everybody uh, what a uh, great job the doctor does down at Andalusia in promoting this thing, and and I am overwhelmed to be part of it. And I do play Coach Bryan in a, in a game of dominoes. Good luck. I'm going to try to whoop him. All right. Yeah, we ain't got to go half, but this yeah. interview ain't over. It's over. Oh, <laughs> I, I, we better than what's fixing to follow us. <laughs> oh, say bye-bye, <laughs> Doc. Bye-bye. We appreciate you doing it, Phil. Well, thank come you. on down. Send, you send Mississippi truck darling. <laughs> you may have to come back sometime, son. Hemp, you don't figure to wait 20 years to uh, win this tournament again, do you? Well, it's, it looks like it could be a possibility the way I'm playing now. <laughs> I've got a no-hitter going for 1981. So it's You're something. not playing well? No, I hadn't. I hadn't played well the entire year. Have you pointed for the tournament? Well, as much as I could, but uh, still uh, practicing more, hadn't seen help anything. <laughs> I'm still struggling to shoot 73 or 4, and I had, have not shot par out here this year. Well, Phil, we're going to have the best team we've had. Now, we've got a very difficult schedule. We've got uh, seven bowl teams, and then LSU turned down a bowl. And we've got Arkansas, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida in a row. So we, we better have a good team. You sound like Pat Dye. He's telling the same story. Hey, is that right? Well, that'd be good. <laughs> we don't play them, unfortunately. <laughs> so you all can commiserate. Huh? You bet. We've got plenty of hard games as it is. <laughs>
been working closely with Dr. Wayne Teague, State Superintendent of Education. Major emphasis on elementary and secondary education. Budget not passing. I think there are some school systems that will not open if we do not have a budget and have borrowed all they can borrow. And the only way they could borrow additional money would be to borrow against the budget for next year. And that budget is not passed. We'll just have to not open school and wait until the budget is passed. And then they'll complete their 175 teaching days, and it may run them up to where they're finishing schools in late June or at the end of July. It took 4,100 workers to build the plant using tons of steel and concrete at a price of more than a billion dollars. The Joe company Fox. officials celebrating the plant's completion say that's a small amount compared to the benefits customers will receive. Unit 2 is undergoing final testing now and is expected to go online. In Alabama schools, okay, next month, several Montgomery teachers will already be prepared. The local instructors are getting most of their classroom material together now, but in a different sort of way. They're drilling, drawing, measuring, and creating classroom instruction with cardboard. The idea is called cardboard carpentry, an inexpensive way for teachers and homemakers to build anything from tables and bookcases to baby doll cradles and even Winnie the Pooh. The instructor of the cardboard carpentry workshop is Dr. Jerry DeBruin, who also authored a book on the subject. DeBruin says the idea originated in Massachusetts, where he picked it up, then took it to Illinois, Ohio, and now to Alabama, where DeBruin says the idea has really caught on. It has been very successful around the United States, and uh, for 13 years now, we have introduced, I would say, hundreds and hundreds of teachers to the basic principles of cardboard carpentry and vision training. And I see in Montgomery, Alabama, a real nice sharing and caring among teachers, working together, sharing ideas, which is why this center is so vitally important to Montgomery. It really gives teachers a chance to share and care for each other and develop materials that will ultimately help children. One teacher says she likes building classroom materials for her students because, she says, it gives children a more helpful way of seeing exactly what the instructor is teaching, and instructors won't have to worry too much about children tearing up the craft. And De Bruin says the cardboard is like jeans, tough enough even for kids. Kim Davis, WSFL, TV News. Dias is 20 years old. He says that's a good age to be in the profession he's chosen. Dias is a male model. Six months ago, some friends got Dias interested in modeling in some local fashion shows. Doing that for a while, he traveled to the Southeastern Models Convention in Anniston as what he calls just an interested observer. 
of that observation proved to be well worth the effort, a New York modeling agency representative saw Dias and asked him to come to New York. Dias went last week and signed with the Elite Modeling Agency. He says they liked his wholesome look. Well, um, that's what I consider to be, let's say, on the California culture side. And uh, so I guess they have a look for every different kind of model there is. Cynthia Jessner, owner and director of Cynthia's studio in Montgomery, where Dias got his start, says he is the first model of her agency to go to New York. She says Dias got a lucky break. It's very difficult for even very experienced models to get signed by New York agencies. You really have to have a special kind of look. And it's really hard to break into the business. We've been very fortunate. Dias says he feels very lucky and attributes much of his success to the support of friends without which he says he might not have held up under the strain of the stiff competition of modeling. Tom Foreman, WSFA TV News.
The Attorney General's office hired five expert witnesses in the Bell case. All are expected to testify on evidence found while studying the telephone company's financial and operational data. One witness, management consultant David Efron, has already made a recommendation that Bell be granted a $7.4 million increase and be allowed to earn an 11.47% rate of return on a rate base rather than the 13% Bell had sought. When Efron's recommendation was made, telephone company officials denounced the findings, saying the low figure was totally inadequate for Bell to meet the competitive and future technological needs confronting the telephone company. So tomorrow, Bell officials begin cross-examining the intervenor side before the PSC rules on just how much of an increase, if any, the telephone company should receive. Kim Davis, WSFA, TV News. is it's a, it's a political issue and it's got nothing to do with race and 62 percent is almost impossible for the basic reason the more I know you about running. The new and ultra-modern emergency department facilities at the Southeast Alabama Medical Center in Dothan are expected to provide a degree of service not previously available to emergency patients in the area. Dr. William Adams, medical director of the center's emergency department, says the new facilities are special. It starts with a whole new specialty of emergency medicine and the fact that there are people trained to be available uh, given any type of emergency at all times. Dr. Adams says when the center opens tomorrow, it will have by far the largest emergency department in the Tri-States area. Although emergency treatment has always been available, he says this will supplement the services of private physicians. A team of four doctors along with a well-trained staff of nurses will provide 24-hour service to the emergency department. Dr. Adams says this is just part of the whole secret to efficient emergency room service. One of the other parts is adequate equipment and space. In the past, he says quarters have sometimes been cramped at the center. Dr. Adams says the new system will provide much better care. I think without question we will be able to get to a lot of people faster because we will have more places for them to be. It will make it the physician able to see more of the patients and the fact that we're instituting the triage nurse situation so that uh, as a patient comes in, they will be categorized by a trained emergency person. The triage system provides a registered nurse at the front desk to determine which patients need immediate help. Dr. Adams says emergency room care is not a first-come, first-served situation. The medical staff must be prepared to process those situations most critical at the moment. Triage will play an important role at the new facility, since about 30% of the medical center's patients are admitted through the emergency department. Tom Foreman, WSFA TV News. I think, of course, looking back, uh, I was a believer in the LEAA and a lot of its programs. I think it had a, a lot of good programs, and I think we've got to sort of profit from its history. Uh, take the good programs, uh, revise them, and do away with the ones that wasted money that were not effective. But I think it, there is a need for assistance, particularly in regards to 
police education. In Alabama, we adopted a minimum uh, a training program that requires that every new policeman during his first nine months in office, that he has to have 240 hours of basic fundamental uh, training and education in regards to the police science. And this has helped and professionalized our police force. struggled the whole way around I guess I just I got in trouble with a lot of drives and I, scr I thought I scrambled real well and didn't make didn't make but one birdie all day but and that was on 16 so I wasn't hitting the ball very well I just made the putts I had to make I guess was there any point during the, the game that you thought you had it made or had it made so when I had that putt on 18 was the first time I thought I could win because I'd been behind all day and uh, that putt right there was the one that put me ahead I I thought I might could win on 17 when Hamp made bogey and I made a par, so I tied it up. I knew I, knew I had a chance then, but I wasn't sure until that last putt went in the hole. Still, he stays, stays that way. Good shot. Off shot there. Great right shot. Get up. Jerry Pate. Um, we've had some amateurs that are still amateurs today that have played, like Griff Moody and Bob Twait, and several of uh, several of them that are still on the college golf team. Mr. Baker, this is South Central Bell's largest single rate increase request. Why does the phone company need that much money? Well, it does seem like a lot of money compared to some of the past requests we've had, but there are a lot of things that have been happening uh, in the competitive area that impact this rate increase. In fact, $66 million of it has been brought about by changes in regulation. For example, the FCC has ordered the expensing of station connections which is, accounts for about $33 million, and there's a new depreciation approach, uh, remaining life, which will put the Bell system and South Central Bell in a more competitive position. We need the money for one basic reason. Our company is not immune from inflation. Our employees uh, must be paid wages so that we can continue to attract, attract good people. And we have a very, very tough job providing service to Alabamians. Alabama is a growing <coughs> state, and as it grows, we must be here to provide the telephone service. And those are the basic reasons why the increase is as large as it is. During the opening testimony, several persons on fixed incomes spoke out against the proposed increase, saying that if it is granted, they won't be able to pay the higher telephone bill. How do you feel about that? I have a lot of sympathy with people that are struggling on fixed incomes today. Uh, I have to weigh that with the fact that I know that we must be in a position to provide telephone service. And we mentioned uh, measured service a little earlier. That's one of the reasons we propose that, is that some of these people will have an option. I don't really feel that telephone service is 
anything but one of the best bargains we have going today. I think the people that use their telephones and that uh, recognize what the value of that is, the fact that you can reach anywhere in the world from your own home, really object to paying the kind of rates they're paying. And I know that it's going to be difficult on some people. We still have to weigh that with the, with the fact that what is the alternative? And the alternative is, uh, will Alabamians uh, be able to afford less service? Uh, I think the answer to that is no. I don't How does the phone company feel about the FCC's decision to deregulate telephone service? President Billy Joe Kemp attacked the FCC's proposal. How do you feel about it? Since the FCC has taken this position, we feel like that we must go ahead with all the efforts that we can to be able to compete. Again, we're not fighting them. Uh, we are taking the posture that competition is here, and we want to be a part of it. We don't think we should be excluded by any failure to act on the Commission's part. I'm hopeful that the commissioners will understand that uh, it's nothing they've done that's brought this deregulation about, but the mood of the country is let companies take things to cost. And telephone service has not developed that way. It's been a national averaging pricing issue, and uh, it will be a painful process. But I'm hopeful that we can develop some understanding throughout the rest of these hearings. Mr. Banker, tell us about some of the proposed changes in the rate increase request. Of course, measured service is something whose time has come. Basically, what this is is a service that will allow a customer an option. They can, um, if the commission adopts this proposal, have a telephone bill that's less than the one-party flat rate charge, and it's considerably less if they're willing to limit their calls. We know that there are some people, young marrieds and others, that really do not use their telephone too much. We also know that there are people that are on limited incomes and fixed budgets that have an opportunity through measured service or a, quote, usage-sensitive pricing basis to know how much they can use and what it will cost them. I suspect telephone service is about the only thing going today where you can pay a flat fee and use all of it that you want to. Okay. Now, on the 25-cent coin, that's another one whose time has come. It's been 27 years since coin telephone calls have been repriced in Alabama, and I don't know of a single thing that's remained the same price for the last 27 years. We know from our various studies that the cost of coin telephone calls approaches 25 cents, and it doesn't make much sense that the basic exchange rate payer would subsidize or pay for coin telephone calls. It doesn't make sense to me that if someone traveling through Alabama wants to place a local call at a coin telephone, that Alabamians should subsidize that. And we're arguing very strongly, and we know that state jurisdictions all across this nation have bought the 25 cent uh, coin approach. And what it will do is it will save Alabamians over $3 a year in their basic exchange service. And we, we feel that it's something that we ought to give them that option of doing. I'm certainly hopeful the Commission will uh, take advantage of this opportunity to go ahead and let us reprice coin telephone calls. Florida. Mayor he Palmer repeated much of what he said at a public meeting yesterday, a meeting that included District 3 Councilman Joe Reed. But Reed wasn't at the meeting today, and Palmer waged an all-out attack on Reed. 
The mayor says Reed is trying to turn a political issue into a racial one. Yesterday, Reed said Balmer's plan is designed to break up the black vote in District 3 by reducing it from its current 80% to 62%. Reed claims this is to keep him from being re-elected. Balmer admits he doesn't want Reed to remain a councilman. He is attempting to mislead the citizens in saying that, uh, uh, that my motivation is racially inspired. I don't care what black gets elected in District 3 as long as it ain't him. Palmer says when Reed is winning, it's politics. When he's losing, it's race. You know, he's a real good political operative, and he's up on the, in the legislature, and they're redistricting up there. And he's got the long knives up there trying to redistrict folks that don't vote with him out of their seat. But that's politics. If I try to do it here, it's race. Palmer says he told the councilman at the outset that not everyone would be happy with any plan for redistricting. Now Palmer says he's designed his plans to accommodate those who have worked with him, and what's left goes to Reed. The mayor also spoke about the city's budget for next year. He says the city will do all of the things it needs to do, but only some of the things it would like to do. Palmer says as long as he's mayor, he won't allow the city to fall into the red. Tom Foreman, WSFA TV News. Before company attorneys cross-examined the interveners, PSC President Billy Joe Camp announced that the commission has drafted an order opposing the FCC's proposal to deregulate the telephone industry. The order is similar to the one filed by the PSC in Louisiana, except it includes all telephone companies regulated by the Alabama PSC. Camp says the commission wants the FCC to reconsider its action that deregulates what he called the best operating telephone service in the world. Camp says the industry isn't broken, so why fix it? Responding to the PSC's decision, South Central Bell's Vice President Carlton Baker says the proposed action to keep Bell from entering the competitive market is not only unfair, but isn't in the public interest. Baker conceded, however, that deregulation could cause customers to pay substantially higher rates. Commissioner Jim Folsom.